My name is Shu, and you're watching Rerolling Ones. <sighs> so many loud noises. <laughs> Some viewers have asked me about my Skaven paint scheme, which is the Ash Rats of Haish. Shaish. What is the Ash Rats of Shaish? So I'm going to show you how I do it, and I hope you learn something. You can annoy all your friends with it. It's going to be a good time. Step one, clean up your messy workstation. This is a shame. do my best to keep this in focus here. Let me kind of describe to you what we're looking at. This is the model we're going to be painting today. Um, this is a uh, Skaven drill team. Uh, they're going to lead all of the uh, morale events. No, they drill into the ground. And uh, what these guys are going to do is that this is a metal model. It's based on top of a, a piece of cork. Uh, I'm trying to keep the camera in focus here, but I think it's going to be hard because um, it likes to think that we're talking about the mat, but we're not. So, um, yeah, this, this model's mounted on cork, and it has some uh, grit glued down using super glue. Um, and it's been primed black with chaos black spray. Now, it's a little bit like this model here. Um, it's metal, and it's been, you know, it's had mold lines scraped, and it's stuck down on a piece of cork that had some flocking attached to it later. I'm going to go and give this puppy a zenithal highlight with my airbrush and what that means is I'm going to be spraying it from the top down um, from kind of at an angle with two different colors. I'm going to be using um, Mechanicus Gray and I'm going to be using a little bit of Celestra Gray uh, and that's going to give me a bit of a moldy uh, old gross gray look to these guys. We're going to start with that. Alright so here's a uh, Here's what it looks like after it's been airbrushed. Here's a fun uh, little pro tip here. This is a uh, this is a paint stirrer. I put, put some hobby tack down on, which is like this blue tack stuff, and uh, I stuck the rats to the base, by the base to this thing. Stick your models to a paint stick, and that way you can spray it from all directions if you want to. But I didn't do that this time. I just zapped it from the top. Um, you can see that it's darker on the underside and brighter on the top. So the goal here was to create like a sense of, um, uh, you know, like a gradient and the kind of brightness that was, you know, to simulate light that's coming down on these models. You can do this also by dry brushing from the, uh, let me pull the right side up for you here. You can do this also by dry brushing from the top down. There's a great tutorial about it, uh, but the ultimate guide to dry brushing by Vincent Ventrell, you should absolutely check it out. I'll link it if I remember. Okay, now comes the part where all the really good painters weep openly because um, I'm going to do something awful here. And I'm just going to wash most of these guys with this uh, Drakenhop Nightshade. It's a Citadel shade. It's an ink wash. Uh, my goal here is to kind of make these guys look like they're running around in a bluish ashen waste. You notice I'm not really hitting their equipment very much. I'm just trying to hit the rats themselves. Uh, their equipment, it's uh, kind of the narrative here is that these are scryer rats, so they would uh, fastidiously clean their equipment. While they themselves are filthy animals, they keep really good care of their tech. So their tech is going to be this uh, straight warplock bronze, and uh, my goal here is to kind of give it that select selective desaturation look where I think you've seen it before, like the photograph itself looks pretty black and white um, or, or color light or color deprived, uh, but the there's something in the in the composition that is that is colored um, and that in this case is going to be uh, the war rat's weapons and most specifically the warplot green. I've got a rock and roll challenge here where I'm trying to get ink wash on the inside of this model. So you're going to see how I try to do that without just drenching this dude in ink wash. Although that's pretty much what I'm doing. You may also notice that there's a massive mold line along the top of this rat here. If you can just stop judging me for two seconds, ink wash dry, and we'll come back and do the next step. 
Okay, it's been a little while, and you can see that the uh, Drakenhof Nightshade has uh, set up. So uh, you can kind of tell that this is already kind of looking a little bit like a um, like a value sketch. You know, like a you know the lot of a lot of light parts are lighter, and you can tell that it looks like there's light cascading down onto these guys. Um, this is kind of a cool effect, and uh, so. It's pretty easy to achieve this, even if you dry brush down the zenithal, uh, the top down light. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to get this look. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our celestial gray, this stuff, uh, get it in the frame. Here we go, celestial gray. Um, this is a dropper bottle I bought on Amazon. I, this is GW paint, I trust me. It's just a, water, a dropper bottle to, because it's easier. Right, so this thing is, um, we're gonna go back to the celestial gray and dry brush it on here super lightly. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, I'm just gonna hit it on the tail here. Yeah, see, it's way too strong already. I can see brush strokes in there. I want to go even less. Let's see if I can work it out. There we go. Now I'm gonna start to move that highlight on here using the dry brush, going uh, from up, you know, top to bottom. Uh, and I'm doing that again just to emphasize the uh, the light coming from the top of these miniatures going down to the bottom and letting the darker undertones of our undershading do what it's supposed to do. Um, undershading being just the parts that wasn't uh, wasn't hit by the airbrush originally. There's that unsightly uh, seam again. Sorry if I'm not completely in frame here. This dry brushing is probably still a little too heavy. That's okay. We can tone it back down. With more of the ink wash. You notice I'm still leaving the weapon alone because we're going to go through and uh, paint the weapon in a uh, uh, Warplock Bronze. That's what we're going to use on it. Now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to add a little bit of Nolm Oil. I'm sure you've heard of this stuff. Um, Nolm Oil is the kind of a, a black ink wash. And I'm going to use this to tone down the uh, the contrast a little bit um, just to create a little bit more depth in the, in the recesses and to kind of take off the edge of the uh, the dry brush chalkiness that I got right there. there you can kind of see it. So in this case, I'm picking out his uh, outfit with this stuff um, more than I am with this skin. So the reason for that is just because I want the Nolan Oil to kind of describe the cloth a little differently than his skin, than his flesh. And I'm probably going to try a glaze for his tail. Get that ink wash off there. Um, what a glaze will do for the tails of these guys is it'll give it just a little bit of color, a little bit of life, without taking away the, uh, the nightshade. With this guy I'm going underneath, uh, on, on the underside here, just because I know that it's supposed to be a little darker than it is. Um, but the airbrush and my dry brush didn't really reach it. And then we'll let that ink wash set up. Um, while we're at it though, I think what I'll do is create a little bit of glaze with this um, Carex stone. Yeah, so what this is gonna do for us, we're gonna thin this Carex stone down a lot. When I get a paint and put it on my palette, I tend to get my brush wet first, so none of the paint is going to the barrel of the bristles. The barrel of the bristles is the inside of the brush. And then I rinse it immediately just to make sure that none of that paint dries in there. Let's thin this down quite a bit. Okay, back to it. We're going to um, use this glaze I just created and put it on the tails of these dudes. My gosh, is nothing in focus? Okay, that's better. All right, so just in case you didn't see before, I am glazing the tails with Kyrex Stone. Um, again, I want it to be bright where it's supposed to be bright and dark where it's supposed to be dark. So I had to use a really thinned down version of the Kyrex Stone. Nothing's in focus. This is terrible. 
It's a bad experience, I'm sorry. Alright. It was down in this area here that I pulled in some of that Nuln oil, and it ended up making it a little darker. Which I think is going to be okay in the long run. I mean, it's going to suck to be this guy's partner. It's like, it's, I carry this heavy thing around for you, and all you do is whack me in the face with your tail. Now I'm going to go pick out some details with this. Uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, Celestra Gray and uh, just do a little bit of line work here. I've got my uh, Windsor Newton uh, size one out. I'm just going to make sure that I've got a good tip on it. And I'm just going to go through and pick out a couple of the details that I think have have uh, um, got some meaning to them. Something that will, you know, catch the eye. Um, just the raised edges of things, the edge of his clothes, um, anything that would have been dragging along the ground. You can see that actually the ink wash has already left kind of a natural highlight there. I'm just going to go out and, and kind of emphasize that highlight a little bit here with my line work. I'm just kind of using the side of the tip of the brush. The brush is really good at keeping a, a tip for me. So I'm going to keep going all over the miniature and keep doing this stuff. I'm going to build up these kind of these uh, highlights for him. If I'm smart about it, I'm actually going to be able to cover up that seam somewhat um, by just putting a line over the top of it. There you go. Starting to look a little bit more ashen, a little more ratty. And I'm just going to go and kind of let, like, let the ink wash inform where I'm going to put my highlights down. Um, the areas that the ink didn't touch, that's going to get the, the attention. My paint's been on my brush for a little bit here, like a little bit around, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds. So I, I, what I do is I just dump the paint off and I just make sure there's no more paint left on there. And then I, I start over. Um, I make sure the brush is wet when I start as well. Um, and what that does for me is it makes sure that the, uh, the bristles don't get paint drying inside of them, especially these lighter colors. Um, and that's death for a brush, basically. So it's kind of like a long-term brush care thing that I do. And again, I'm just letting the ink wash inform where I paint my highlights. I really hope this stays in focus for you because uh, the way the camera is situated, I can't really see whether or not it's in focus or not. I promise I will do better at uh, a better job of filming these as I practice more. I didn't even rinse my brush off, I'm just going to go right into the Kyrex Stone. And uh, it's pretty thinned out already, but it's been sitting in the palette a while, so I'm, it's dried already. So I'm just going to try to bring up those highlights a little bit. It's okay if they have a the little bit of the uh, Celestia Gray in there, because this Celestia Gray is kind of a whiter color, and it serves as a good highlight. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do here is get in there and and uh, just do a little line work along his robe. The paint on my brush is pretty thin right now. And we're switching back to the Celestra Gray entirely. Um, what I'm doing is I dip in the paint and I let it rinse off a little bit or dab it off in the towel. 
that have all fallen in the excess, like, fluid. And that gives me a lot of control over the paint. Um, probably way more than I need for these guys. Because really all they gotta do is look cool on a battle, rep, battle report. So, these guys are not gonna be display quality, not with the stylistic paint job like this. I think the, the thing is that people notice about this is that um, it's a distinctive paint style and that's cool but it's very stylized and stylized doesn't generally you know it doesn't look realistic that's not really the goal of it the goal of it is to um, be striking and look cool and uh, as far as that goes mission accomplished right <laughs> all right this guy's got some cool hair we're gonna try to bring his hair out a little bit it's cool if it's just kind of blue and gray though all right well that's Got a lot of highlight on these guys. It's enough to bring the uh, the rats themselves out, so let's go and work on the guns next. Okay, we have the warp block bronze out now. And just to make this uh, weapon team match the other weapon teams I got in my collection, I'm just going to paint the warp block bronze all over the weapon portion of the model. Um, unfortunately, the warp block bronze is such a uh, strong pigment. I've got a lot of paint on my brush here. A strong pig pigment that... Uh, it's going to completely override all of the shading, that pre-shading that we did with the Zenithal highlighting and all that other stuff. So what we'll have to do is just come back to it. I love Warp Block Bronze so much. It's my favorite color for sure. Um, and it goes a little bit of it goes a long ways. You can almost paint with it right out of the pot. It dries real smooth. The pigment is very strong. right out of the pot and just put it right on. Disaster! Who is this animal that paints with paint right out of the pot? Doesn't he know what he's doing? The answer is no. No, I don't know what I'm doing. I kind of know what I'm doing. I know well enough that I can paint out of the pot with this paint, and it's not going to make a difference. It's especially not going to make a difference because specifically I know that the look I'm trying to achieve is very saturated for this tone, and so it's going to be completely, like, it's going to be very warp block bronze. But I am taking the time to move it around on the, the metal components here. Um, I think one of the keys to using um, this technique is that you can't, like, the gradient is already painted on my rats. So if I go and get some warp block bronze on these guys right now, I either have to rinse it off super fast or start over or attempt to match that gradient by hand and that's gonna suck. So I'm just being super careful and trying not to paint warp block bronze on something I've already painted. I'm probably gonna screw that up because I am who I am. I'm not dumping the paint out of this brush as much because I think it's okay if it gets ruined. It's a, it's kind of a spare brush and it's from an inexpensive craft set. So. Um, I'm allowed to use it to move fast here, which is exactly what I'm attempting to do. Get this guy done quickly so I can use him in the battle report tomorrow. It's gonna be cool. Scryer versus Sylvaneth, I think. It's gonna be battle for the ages, let me tell you. Rats with computers fighting trees with brains. Part of me thinks I should unsnap these guys. They're just held together as super glue, but if I if I broke them apart here, it'd be a little bit easier to paint. Actually, first we're gonna do this, uh, do these hoses. We're gonna do them in a, the gray that we were using previously, the Celestra gray, that's what it's called. drill bit here. We gotta make the drill bit look super chaotic. So, um, you can make it red and glowy if you want to go that route. 
That's cool, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with something a little bit more traditional. I'm going to go with a, um, a wah flesh. A wah flesh. That's what it's called, wah flesh. And I'm going to use a moot green. And I'm going to use the um, bale tan green um, shade. There it goes. Then focus down. While that paint is chilling there, I'm going to throw in a little bit of moot green while it's still wet. We're going to wet blend right on the model. See where that takes us. All right, I'm going to take advantage of this drying and uh, do these do these hoses here in the moot green. Because we painted them white before, this moot green is going to just explode. Pow! Looks really good. We're going to have to do a couple coats. Okay, so we've come a long way with this guy. We've got his rat tails up. Um, we've got this uh, little bit of a blend going on here in the front of the, the drill bit there. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use moot green straight up. And um, just do a little bit of highlighting. I'm going to bring out some Ural, Ural yellow as well to highlight the green. That is the, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Ural, 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 Ural? Let me see what it looks like. Okay, it's this stuff. Erel. Erel yellow? Yeah, that's the stuff I use to highlight moot green. And it is awesome yellow. It is my favorite yellow. Um, I'm picky about yellows. Um, and this one really works well. So um, for this, we're just going to highlight using straight uh, moot green. And anything that's warped stone is supposed to be kind of glowy or empowered in some way so you want to kind of indicate that with the, the paint now you notice how kind of like blurry my paint is and how sketchy it looks that's fine we're gonna do it again we're just gonna go through and do this a couple times do these lines a couple times until they're nice and bold see they're already starting to look better so if you're wondering if I came up with the idea of this paint scheme I did not um, I saw somebody paint their their Skaven army this way that was like an old 7th edition Skaven army. It was all metal and everything was just like gray and blue and looked like it had been crawling around in squalor forever. And That was just such a cool idea to me. Um, and the idea that Shayish, Shayish is a death realm, you know, I wanted it to look really desolate and abandoned and ashen. <laughs> That's how I imagine it anyways. Okay, if I'm going to talk to you, I can't stick brushes in my mouth. Okay, if I'm going to... Um, now what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to go over the the drill bit with Beltane Green. The reason for this is just because I want there to be a lot more like deep contrast on this model. Um, on the drill bit anyways. And just to bring out what's what's there in the... the these um, ropes, whatever they're called. The wires. So... Being that I just painted it, uh, paint on here, I don't want to reactivate that paint by dragging my brush through. Uh, I'll do it a little bit here. It'll be fine. When you paint ink wash over fresh paint, it can reactivate the paint and kind of make it smear. Um, I'm kind of okay with that right now. We're being kind of sketchy and loose with this anyways. So it's not like we got to be super, super detail-oriented. We just want to make sure that we're bringing out the bringing out the contour of the, the shadowy parts, the places where the pipes overlap, the, these cables. Now that the ink wash has um, settled in and smoothed out my lines a lot, I'm going to go through and rough them up again, just because I can't leave a good thing alone. So what I'm going to do is just uh, try to reinforce my greens and my yellows a little bit more. Just put some uh, really thin down moot green here. Moot green. And uh, yeah, just trying to make it look a little bit more um, glowy. Glowy a term? Kind of a neat 
artifact of not painting the shaft all the way down is that it looks like the stone is kind of cooling off as it gets toward the end, and I kind of like that. Um, it, I don't know, maybe it's not as cool as I'm imagining it, but it creates a narrative in my head. And any kind of art that shows a story or implies a story is cool to me. You know, like, if you go and you model a dude so um, their head is like they're holding someone else's head or they're you know um, they just have blood on their boots you know like something happened man they that dude saw some stuff bringing out that Ural yell again I'm just gonna hit the very tippy tops of some of these spires here just to make them look like this thing is super dangerous yeah it only hits on a four but when it does it does three damage actually it's not even the point of this thing isn't even to hit the bad guy the point of this thing is to be the uber driver for better unit I know it's kind of annoying that this is like clearly a wood texture back here and I painted it metal, but it's, again, it's the style. It's not, it's not even, it's not the point that it's supposed to be red or that it's supposed to be brown or whatever. I'm going to go for this style. Um, and so sometimes you have to make sacrifices in terms of realism when it comes to some style. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is some highlights on the Warp Block Bronze. So naturally I would use the most obnoxious gold color I could for it, um, which is my favorite uh, gold color in the Citadel range, Retributor Armor. Yeah. I'll show you once again. We're going to use the nice, um, my longer bris bristled brush for this. We're using the, uh, um, the size one. Look at that. I have a little gold on my finger. Gold finger. Isn't that a bad guy in Bond? All right, let's see if we can get you in focus. Here we go. Some highlights. And uh, here's the dinky part. Like, I'm doing what I call asymmetrical highlighting. What is asymmetrical highlighting, you might be asking yourself. Well, um, Mr. Imaginary Question Asker, um, it is a, uh, if, you, if you just paint a highlight straight down this thing, um, that's cool, you could do that. And in fact, I will, like, I wanna draw a line with all the highlighted raised edges here, so I'm just gonna go over all the raised parts and uh, just draw a line where the light hits it naturally. Um, and you can do that, that's fine, but the, the technique for an asymmetrical highlight is that you are um, not putting it in the same kind of anticipated area. So one of the things I like doing is uh, putting it down in one spot and then putting it down on the other side of the thing. So, like up here, we'll put a couple of highlights on these little raised edges, like this. And then for the banding in the grate here, we will do um, something a little different. We'll just do, you know, like one or two of the grate bars. So next what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of uh, null oil on the metal parts and see if I can bring them down a notch. I guess they're a little obnoxious right now. That should do it. And uh, yeah, there you have it. That's um, that's the ash rat scheme in a nutshell. You don't really need to do much more from here. Um, I'm gonna paint the rim of the base in uh, the standard Mechanicus gray, and then I'm going to maybe dry brush a little bit on the top. Um, but this this is looking right. This is looking how I want it. This is looking intentional, and I'm gonna leave it at that. And there you have it. That is my Skaven paint scheme for the Ash Rats of Shaish. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you wanna. I'm not a cop. I can't make you do it.